Americans alive, some Americans alive in 1860 had seen several French republics yeah. rise and fall. Mm -hmm. They had witnessed the uh, Democratic and Republican, small r Republican, uprisings in European countries in 1848 and the uh, repression of those uprisings. Uh, they had witnessed the creation of the second French Republic in 1848 and its overthrow by Louis Napoleon who created the Second Empire in 1851. And that's why Lincoln said that uh, America was the last best hope for the survival of Republican liberties in the world. Uh, that's why he said in the Gettysburg Address that this Civil War is a great uh, test whether any government so conceived and so carried out can survive or will perish from the earth. Um, Americans, I think, in the 19th century were really quite obsessed with the with the um, issue of whether their republic could survive or would it go the way of most other republics which had been swift, uh, swept into the dustbin of history, going back to the Roman Republic, if you will. Um, and they were well aware that most of the um, um, ruling class in countries like Britain, which was of course the country of most importance in American perceptions, uh, sympathized with the Confederacy, or if they didn't sympathize with the Confederacy, at least were hostile, were anti-American, if you will, uh, and would have been quite happy to see the United States itself be swept into the dustbin of history as united uh, states, because I think the great fear of Lincoln and other people in the North was that if the Confederacy succeeded in establishing itself as a separate nation through the process of seceding, that that would constitute a fatal precedent. That any time in the future when a disaffected section of the country or a disaffected minority uh, had lost a presidential election and felt that its uh, interests were no longer, no longer represented by the United States government, it could invoke that precedent and go out of the United States and that the, the two words United States would become an oxymoron, become the disunited states. There would be no United States. That was, I think, the issue that uh, preoccupied Lincoln and I think obsessed a lot of people in the United States. Would this republic survive as one nation and would the idea of a republic, of a democratic society, uh, be able to, uh, to, to survive this division? Uh, this war. I believe that <clears throat> Lincoln uh, said to an Ohio regiment that uh, the glory of America or the purpose of America is that uh, there will be room for your sons to rise to the top as there was for my father's son to rise to the top. This question of personal mobility loomed large to Lincoln, didn't it? It certainly did and in fact I think that was the fundamental um, underlying ideology of the Republican Party. It's often called the free labor ideology and an essential part of the free labor ideology is social mobility, the right of uh, people to move up through hard work, uh, through exercising their God-given talents, uh, that the society should um, uh, be open uh, to that kind of upward social mobility. We often call it the American dream. Uh, and that, I think, was the main uh, uh, source for the opposition to slavery of a majority of the Republican Party. In a slave society, not only were the slaves um, restricted uh, for life to that subordinate status, but the existence of slavery uh, prevented uh, whites uh, born of, uh, uh, in the lower, part, uh, lower social, uh, part of the social order from rising either because they couldn't compete with slave labor. That's in fact one of the reasons, not the only reason, one of the reasons that Thomas Lincoln took his family from Kentucky to Indiana hmm. uh, in 1816 is because um, it was a slave state in Kentucky and Indiana presented his son, Abraham, uh, with that opportunity to rise. Yeah. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law. 
a leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.